Okay, uh, well this is going to be the next video to the build of the reverse trike. What we're going to be working on today is the joining of the rear end and the midsection. So, what we're going to be, what I'm going to be doing here is it's just going to be a simple bolt pin through. But what I need to do first is since this frame, the primary section of the frame is going to be offset by an inch, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a piece of one inch by one inch, 0.095. I'm going to cut it, have one edge, 22.5 degree cut. Uh, you'll probably have some of this laying around by now. Um, and you're going to measure out one and three eighths inches from the point to where you're going to cut. I think I even have it listed here. Yep, one and three eighths inches. And I'm going to be cutting that part off and we're going to be using just this one little piece. Okay, well I just got the piece cut, ready to go. Nothing's drilled yet. And see how I've got this set up? Now these spacers here, this is going to be five inches and and these five inch spacers are going, to, are going to eventually be put in here. I just have it mocked up right now. But I'm not welding these together yet. I'm going to be welding this piece right there. That's where she's going to be going. Also, went down to Ace Hardware and picked up a uh, some grade 8 bolts. This, um, this longer one is 4 inches long. This one is 3 inches long from the end to the bottom of the head here. Because depending upon where you buy them, they measure the whole bolt or just the area that's used or what. But these are... This one here is three inches from the edge here all the way down to the point, and this is going to be four from up here down to here. And the sizes of these are seven sixteenths. That's what's going to act as the pivots for this. All right, just got that all welded up, and I'm cut a piece of two in or two inches of one inch, eighth inch thick flat stock. Just to make it a little bit more pretty, I'm going to close this off. And then this one is going to close off the front. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, just welded that all up. God, look at that. Oh, that's a crap. Looks like a goddamn cow turd on the end of that steel. <laughs> Alright, yeah, close it all off. Now it's time to grind the hell out of it. So I kind of cleaned it up a little bit, grounded the ground down some of the welds and stuff, and this we're just going to come in contact with the swing arm. So what I did is I'm going to be drilling my 7 16 holes, but what I'm going to do here is I'm measuring in from the edge, measuring in 5 8 and halfway through the steel. Measuring from the end up 5 eighths, and from this end up 5 eighths. I put a little punch there, a little, little dent there, so that way my drill bit will cut directly through that stuff. So that's what I'm going to do next. 5 eighths inches from the edge. 5 eighths inches from the edge. Okay. Okay, just got those drilled. Yep. The reason that I did not, that I waited before I put these holes in here is because if I drill the hole here and then this one and then weld them to, then welded it together, I've done that before and I'd play hell trying to stick the bolt through because the, the holes wouldn't line up. Or if I would have drilled the holes and then put them together and stuck a bolt through there and then welded it, the splatter from my flux core would get on the threads of the bolt. I've done that before too. So I've learned from my mistakes and do it this way. Weld it together, then drill the hole. Yeah, <laughs> I totally forgot to put the cap on that, so I'll have to do that. But anyways, what's next? Do the exact same thing to the rear end, rear swing arm, measure in, 
three or uh, five eighths. Measure in five eighths, and then in the center of the one one inch tubing. Yep. Of course, I stuck that in there too soon. I need to measure it. <laughs> this set up. I have the holes drilled and everything. Um, now we're going to be putting in the crossbars. Now I've got one, two, three, but we're actually going to need four. But we're not going to get to the, this one and the last two till later. Um, so what we're going to, what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to take this crossbar and this is five ex, five inches exactly across. So you're going to want to cut four of these crossbars at five inches long. I have this set up. That's the front end right there. So I have it butted up against my little jig that I have bracketed right to my table. I have it squared. The first crossbar is going to be welded one inch away from the front. Exactly one inch away. And weld that. The second bar that I'll be welding on here will be this one. You see the black mark? From the black mark from the front all the way back to here is 27 and 3 quarters inches. And then that's where you'll weld this one. Don't want to get too close to this, but 27 and 3 quarters inches from the front. Way up there. Whew. Not from that bar, from the very tip of this bar here. 27 and three quarters inches. I better measure it, make sure. Where's my tape? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Mm, yeah, 27 and three quarters. And we'll weld that in place. All right. Well, I put the two together. We have what I used is I've got that seven, the seven sixteenths bolt. I have a washer here. I have a nylon nylon spacer right in between there. I think these are like maybe an eighth inch, maybe something like that have that in there in between and then I have another washer and then the end of the bolt haven't tightened it down yet though so it's the bolt going all the way through a washer a nylon spacer eighth inch thick um, another washer and a lock locking nuts and that's what's going to act as our swing arm but then we got to do the seat area yet and where the shock's going to go. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to want to do that. It's going to put that shock really close to that pivot. And normally, when you put a shock close to a pivot, the pivot affects the properties of the shock a lot more than it normally does. So I might have to move the shock back there. I don't know. But, yeah. Okay. And that's what we got. I'll also I welded those two, those two pieces in place. I just haven't cleaned them off yet, so. It's about 1.30 in the morning here, so I don't think I better be turning on my grinder. <laughs> okay, and there we go so far. That's what we got so far. So yours should look like that one. <laughs> Okay, I had a little trouble trying to, uh, the hardest thing I think was trying to find those white spacers. That was, that was a little hard to find because that, I had to go, I had to get those in a special bin at Ace Hardware and the guy initially gave me these real thin things and I was like, no, that's not going to work, that's not, no way. But anyways, so 
That was a little hard to find those things. I'm sure you could probably find some type of, oh, I don't know. I'm sure an eighth inch washer would work too, or some piece of metal. Just something so that way those two, those two flat surfaces, the two flat surfaces aren't going to be touching. But if you weld this all right, you should have eighth inch there and an eighth inch there. You know, an eighth inch gap on both sides. So when you go to but when you go to put these things together, you should have an eighth inch gap here and an eighth inch gap right there to compensate for that spacer. So all right. Well rate this video guys. Um I'm gonna go in and edit this video and then go to bed. So yeah. But it's coming along. So Rate this video, comment, and subscribe. Take it easy. Hey everybody, I was just messing around with my uh, with this frame and everything in the pivot, and I come to realize that I made a mistake, and I better show this off to you so you guys don't make the same mistake I did. Remember when I was putting this together? Okay. Let me pull this out a little bit more. Okay, remember when I made this? I welded on this plate and then I welded on this front plate here to close this all off and I didn't do it on this side because I forgot to do it on this side what I had done is I had measured my hole out away 5 8 and put the mark and drilled the hole I also did the same thing on this side but remember I didn't put that plate on here I forgot to put that plate on weld that plate on right there so this hole right here is almost an eighth inch that way too far. So when I go to put this pivot together, what you're going to have to make sure you do is that before you drill your holes, you close off your plates and close off this plate, close this off too, before you drill your holes so you can make your correct measurements because if not, and you make the same dang mistake I did, When you go to fold it up, it shouldn't be offset like that. See, the frame actually goes up at an angle. So I thought I'd point that out to you guys so you guys don't make the same mistake. It's still going to work, obviously, but it's just that the frame is slightly crooked. So. Yep, stupid mistakes. Yeah. Hmm. Oh well. So she'll crab walk a little bit. <laughs> Alright guys. I'm sure I'm not the first one to make some dumb mistake like that on my car. But there you go. And uh, I thought I'd point that out. Alright, take it easy.